Kings on courtroom sports deals with the greatest choke by a baseball team. In 2007, the New York Mets, where three weeks ago in the season, saw their seven-game lead over the Philadelphia Phillies slowly melt away like a discarded ice cream cone on a sizzling city sidewalk. Then, there's the 2004 Crosstown New York Yankees, who up three games to none against the despised Boston Red Sox in the ALCS, proceeded to lose the next four games in a row to a Boston team, destined to reverse the curse of the Bambino once and for all. Claiming the Bronx Bombers are the biggest flameouts is 27-year-old Rob Tannen, who at 5'7 and 165 pounds is a self-admitted kickball addict and aspiring professional poker player. Today, we'll see whether he's a bluffer or the real deal. His dream sports job? Playing second base for, who else? The Boston Red Sox. Arguing that the Mets meltdown is more monumental is six foot, 180 pound, 32 year old Fritz Schaefer. Schaefer says he's been to over 500 Major League Baseball games without ever once appearing on a Jumbotron. His dream sports job? Being the GM or pitching coach for the perpetually influx Florida Marlins. This next case in sports court, a very interesting one, as people are always debating what is the biggest choke in sports history, especially when it comes to baseball. A lot of teams have died in the stretch, died in the playoffs, died in the World Series. Two excellent young men to argue this case today. We'll begin with you, Mr. Tannen, your argument. Sure. Well, we're talking about the biggest collapse in Major League Baseball history. It's sort of an easy one. We have the Yankees and the Red Sox, the most illustrious sports, uh, sports get-together in history. We have tons of series over the years that have, that have brought pretty intense games, but we're talking about the 2004 ALCS. Um, we have the Yankees go up 3-0. They destroy the Red Sox in the first three games, 19-8 in Game 3. And they're all ready to wrap it up in game four, bottom of the eighth. Mariano Rivera, what does he do? He gives up the tying run, and then Big Poppy takes care of it at the end. The next, two, next day, another walk-off walk -off base hit. They go back to New York, two more wins, 4 nothing. It's never happened before in Major League Baseball history, only twice before in the NHL. It's, uh, it's pretty obvious to me. It's a strong argument, uh, no doubt about it. It seemed like they had everything in the bag. They had many opportunities to make amends. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Shaper, your response? My response is, first of all, I'm always happy to see the Yankees lose. I think that's fantastic, especially when it's in the postseason and in a heartbreaking fashion. However, <laughs> when, you're, when you're discussing the Yankees and the Red Sox in this, in this environment, you're talking about the two teams that at the time had the highest payrolls in Major League Baseball. They were both in the playoffs, and they were both outstanding ball clubs. I'm taking the position that the 2007 New York Mets – who blew a seven-game lead with 17 games left to play to not one but two teams, the Phillies and the Rockies, who are both historically losing franchises, that is a bigger choke because they didn't choke over the course of four or five pressure-filled days in one series. They choked for two and a half weeks at the end of the season, including playing games at home with a 300-game winner starting the final game in which his stats were one-third of an inning pitch, five hits, seven earned runs, Two walks, no strikeouts, 36 pitches, and only 13 for strikes. Let me ask you a question. Mets, Marlins, Yankees, Red Sox. Who cares? Mets, Let Mar me ask you this. Let's get What's real. worse? <laughs> what, what, would you, if, you were, if you were a Yankee, would you let's just look at that. The Marlins or the Red Sox? What's a worse team to lose to? Down the stretch. We're talking about Yankees. The team Red with a hundred and ninety five million dollar oh, payroll. You, you gotta or, be the, crazy. or the Florida Marlins, who I make more than half their team. Listen, the Marlins Come on. the Marlins have nothing to play for except they love spoiling New York teams, especially the Yankees in the World Series. But this was their chance. They had seven games down the stretch to beat the Mets. They did it six of seven times. That is pretty pathetic. But we're talking about Yankees Red Sox. Everything's going for the Yankees in this series. They take them out in game three, 19 to eight, after two terrible losses in, in New York. And, and, and that nothing's just going for them. In, in both of your arguments, Mr. Tan and Mr. Shaper, that you're referring to New York teams. And of course, the Mets slide had Jane Jarvis, the former organist there, rolling over in her grave mm -hmm. as she was trying to uh, get another course of Chapinecos going there in the seventh inning stretch. The Yankees, of course, uh, and I don't know if uh, you can argue against this, had Mariana Rivera on the mound, right. three outs away from a championship, and the lead in Game Four about to sweep, and ended up yes, getting your swept. Honor. Thank and, you, Your Honor. You know what you're Mets talking about. The lost seven of their final eight games against the bottom two teams in their division, who were fighting each other to avoid losing a hundred games. We're talking about the judge the New York here. He knows Mets, what he's, he knows the what he's New saying. York, the Mariana New York Rivera Mets, is the greatest closer in the game. I'm the a New Red York Sox Mets fan. I'm happy to say that. There's no doubt the Mets but against the two teams, by against the, the, the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies and the Colorado Rockies. Now, let me ask you something. Aside from possibly the Texas Rangers and maybe the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, who are the two loserest 
franchises in baseball who are known for losing. The Marlins the Phillies, are known. Oh, you're fined Phillies fifty dollars for contempt. Loser is not a word. It's not a word. It's not a word. This I have a dictionary over here, and uh, you refer Listen, to it. The Marlins are, are known for for breaking up. Teams We're not talking about the Marlins. We're talking about the they Mets. We're talking about the Mets this. choking. And they, the fact that the Mets, and you yourself said it, that this happened twice in the NHL, where this same deficit has been overcome. Right. This has never happened in any sport where a team ahead by seven games with seventeen shots. It's not because you need to address the court. You've both made compelling arguments. There's no doubt about that. Both have uh, very relevant facts to these arguments, which is unusual in this particular court. But let's uh, try and wrap things up and uh, give me your strongest points, and then we'll make a decision. We got the evil empire, the highest payroll in baseball, going up three games to none against the Red Sox. The year before, they have Aaron Boone take him out in the bottom of the 11th in Yankee Stadium. To, to, to get the Red Sox out of the series. Red Sox have down 3 nothing. They're fans. They're pressed. They have nothing to play for. Bottom of the eighth, it looks like it's over. Three outs away. No. Somehow Dave Roberts takes second. Somehow Miller gets the base hit. Ortiz in the end of the game. Go back to Yankee Stadium. Screw up to, go, go up to game seven. You have Johnny Damon hit the grand slam to end it all. Hey, let's find him fifty dollars for nearly Christmas. That was the first inning. That didn't end at all. It was the first inning he hit that grand slam. It was the second inning, and they went. All right, Mr. Shaver, make your case. You agree there was a lot of baseball left. You've had plenty of time to elaborate, Mr. Tannen. Well respected. Your Your Honor, the facts are these: the Mets blew this lead to two teams, not one. They did it over a course of two and a half weeks, not over a course of one pressure-packed postseason series against an arch rival. Where hey. Things are going to happen. That's the way it is with the Red Sox and the Yankees. Weird things happen. Amazing yeah, things like happen. A-Rod slapping it doesn't the happen. Glove like it well, doesn't happen. to speak. It doesn't happen where the Phillies and the Rockies have never, ever had a situation where they've come back on someone in this respect. And again, you're talking about the team with the highest payroll in the National League, favored to go to the World Series from the start, who got back their best pitcher, Pedro Martinez, who, by the way, had a uh, his career record when he came back off the, Pedro off the DL arm was is two, irrelevant here. He was two, his arm was hanging to the ground like a and orangutan. He, and he finished three and one with, with, with a two five seven ERA in his final final five starts. Right, and I'm even that wasn't enough decision. to stem the tide. Very very good arguments by both of you guys. Uh, uh, this wasn't an easy one, and I have to admit, uh, not that I ever come into any case with any type of bias whatsoever. The Red Sox were a quality here, team that year. They were not anticipating being down three games to nothing and were perfectly capable of winning four in a row over the New York Yankees. The Mets, on the other hand, perfectly were capable. in a braggadocio style. They felt they had the season in the bag, and the fact that they fell completely out of the playoffs, couldn't even get the wild card, has convinced me that, Mr. Shaper, you are the winner. The Mets are the biggest choking dogs in the history this guy doesn't know of what Major League Baseball. Listen, sucks. enough of this insubordination oh here. This Amy, can you deal with these people, please, in the appropriate fashion? See, Red Sox fans just can't handle it. I mean, come on. Another loser Sox, Yankee baby. fan. <laughs> I've got Robert Tannen here. Boy, it had to hurt that loss after such a compelling argument you made. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much obvious to everyone, including myself, that the, the, the choke that the Yankees made in 04 was, was definitely by far the biggest choke in Major League Baseball history. Coming down three games to none, somehow the Red Sox managed to pull four together in a row. Well, I believe you already made that argument and lost, but it has to be tough to know that the judge was actually on your side before you started making your argument. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what he was thinking during the case. I mean, somehow my, my opponent, the Joker, somehow uh, wooed him the other way, but somehow it didn't turn out the right way. Well, at least you can take comfort that even though you lost today in sports court, you won in 04. That's true. Go Red Sox. Stan here with Fritz Schaefer. Today's winner in what was an amazing argument. You really plowed your point through. Uh, absolutely. I'd rather be a uh, joker than a loser. Uh, I, I saw the interview that, that Rob had given earlier. I think I made some pretty compelling points and, and win the case, and that's what happened. Apparently, the judge likes a confident arguer. And also, uh, got a call from Webster's Dictionary, New Word Department, would like to talk to you. Yes, thank you. That's wonderful. Loserist. And that's how it goes on Courtroom Sports.